your adventures. Greetings all, Chook here from Chook's Outdoor Adventures. Well, I've got a special treat for you today. I am going to give you a journey in human psychology where we explore the ultimate depths of despair to the ultimate heights of elation as we go through the 15 different hunting rifles I have hunted with over the last decade. Unfortunately, a couple of these rifles I never actually got to harvest an animal with, but many of them I did. And let's just start at the beginning. This is the height of elation, soon to be the depths of despair. The first hunting rifle, my first rifle I ever had, was a Model 70 Winchester pre-1964 in 30-06, the ultimate Alaska weapon. Even Fish and Game up here says you need to hunt with a 30-06. It was my grandfather's gun. He passed it down to my father. My father passed it down to me. I've never felt an action so buttery smooth as a nice worn-in Model 70 Winchester action. Best action on a rifle by far that I personally have ever experienced. So what did I do? Well, it wouldn't be Chook if I wouldn't sell it and buy a super crappy DPMS AR-10. I don't know if it was the Oracle or the Sporticle 308. Uh, you know, biggest mistake I ever made. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, I wish I could go back in time, but I can't undo that. Uh, we learned from our lessons, and unfortunately, this was a very painful mistake. So the, the DPMS... Um, whatever, it's a decent run-of-the-mill AR-10. This one was so crappy that I had to literally pour engine oil in it to get it to cycle properly, and it would spray hot oil in all directions on me when I fired it. I never actually got an animal with it, but um, I did like see a bear once, and of course I was like, oh, there, there's a bear, and I by the time I got my hearing protection on and raised the rifle and, and found it in the site, it had instantly moved off. And that's happened to me so many times. I need to get <laughs> either just forget about the ear protection or, or get some of the kind you can hear through. Um, so that's that. Those are the first two rifles. Next up, this one was really cool. The SIG SSG 2000 308 rifle. This is a Cold War rifle. First came out in 1983. I think I had the American version, unfortunately, not the German version. The German version is a lot nicer. Um, had some leather pieces that went with it, but still a very cool rifle, um, way ahead of its time. This thing was like the, er, the first precision sniper rifle that I can think of. It was featured in, I think, behind him, Enemy Lines or something like the bad Bosnian guy on that 80s movie had one, but very cool rifle. Unfortunately, I did not take an animal with it. I think I did. might have taken some shots, but I wish I would have saved this rifle really odd because it only held four rounds in this little single stack box magazine it had but what a cool rifle I, I definitely missed that one the next rifle I had is uh, okay I, I dogged on DPMS but this one was really cool this was a rare DPMS AR-10 in 300 SOM short action ultra mag so this thing was just a monstrous probably weighed 15 pounds uh, Huge rifle, basically the power of a 300 Win Mag. Um, Three Bears specialty ordered me some 300 SOM ammo for it. I actually took my first grizzly bear, uh, not a brown bear, an interior grizzly bear with it, and I shot it, and it at midnight, and it spun around, biting at itself, crashing through trees, and I it was terrifying. So I waited till the next morning and tracked the blood and found it dead. You know, it died pretty quickly, it bled out immediately, but. What an amazing gun. I drove up the, to the very top of this mountain out of the middle of nowhere here in Alaska. I bought it from this old guy, and he, a few years later, he text messaged me and was wanting to buy it back, and unfortunately, I had already sold it or traded it or whatever. So kind of a sad story. I wish I would have held on to that one. Really cool rifle. Um, the next one is pretty iconic, too, an M1 Grand and 30 6 Now, this was a mixture of both... Springfield and Winchester parts. It was a World War II rifle from 1943. I did put an ugly Amiga scout mount on it and a, a, a Leopold scout scope, which made it extremely accurate. It was very ugly once I did that. So, but I I kept this one for a good three years and I harvested bear and 
caribou with it, uh, multiple caribou. I even made a 400 shot with it. It's one of the most accurate rifles that I've ever had, which is very impressive since it's a cold, you know, a World War II rifle from 1943. So I wish I would have kept that one. Uh, kind of a bummer, I lost that one. So next up, uh, pretty cool rifle, a Remington 700, the AACSD Tactical. Uh, first, I had it in a Hogue stock, and I did a mountain hunt with it. Then I got this Aces 2.0 chassis, and that actually made it pretty cool. I had a Leopold Mark IV tactical scope on there, and I actually kept this one for a few good years. Uh, when LW Road first moved out here, we, we kind of sighted it in together. I showed him that, and uh, definitely took some caribou with it. It was a very cool rifle, way too heavy. It also topped off 10 12 pounds with that chassis but it looked like something out of stargate sg1 <laughs> just a really cool looking cool feeling rifle i wish i would have kept the chassis at least next up is a uh, ruger mark ii the m77 300 wind mag and of course it had the the black paddle stock which i should have kept on but i put some like boyd stock on it or something that we went to lw Rhodes house and drilled through the stock and I put this ugly Kydex cheek piece on it and then I took it to Wild West Guns and paid like 600 bucks. They couldn't believe I wanted this. They had to machine out the bottom so they could fit a box magazine system in it. And of course I never harvested an animal with it and I just got tired of it after a few months. Wasted a whole bunch of money on it and just got rid of it. But it was an interesting 300 Win Mag. Again, too heavy for a lot of the hunts I do, but it was this monstrous 300 Win Mag with a box magazine and the Kydex cheek piece. Whatever. That's a chook thing. A very tactical Mall Ninja rifle that I unfortunately I never got. Very accurate, though. I did get jagged groups of three holes just like touching at 100 yards. So cool rifle. Um, my next one is a also a 300 Win Mag that I never got to hunt with. And this was a HS Precision Savage 110 300 Win Mag. And I did the whole Chris Kyle replica thing where I rattle canned it, kind of tan, flat, dark earth, and put the cheek piece on it. It was a very accurate rifle. I was very impressed with that HS Precision trigger. Uh, again, very heavy, over 10 pounds, way too heavy to hunt with, but very cool rifle. But anyways, got rid of that. Um, then I had, a, I think it was an M77, a Ruger 338 Win Mag. Now, this one was beautiful. It had perfect uh, walnut stock, perfect uh, bluing. It was reblued by Wild West Guns. It actually had a muzzle brake put in by Wild West Guns. I never hunted with it. I, I didn't want to see it kind of leave the family, so I traded away from to Chuck from Alaska Ballistics, and he actually shot a grizzly bear in the face <laughs> with it at like 80 yards away and just immediately dropped it. Sweet rifle. I'm probably planning on getting it back from Chuck. He said he'd sell it back to me because he doesn't like it that much anymore. He's got tons and tons of rifles. It's hard to find 338 ammo right now. Um, and he thinks it kicks too hard even with the muzzle brake. And it, it was a, a pretty good thump of a kick, but I, I just like that gun because it was so beautiful. I'm sure it's got some dings on it, but it's still such a beautiful gun, and I need a larger caliber 338. So this is actually, you know, a, a good part of this sad story. I think I'm going to get it back from Chuck. So that's pretty cool. Um, then uh, I returned to the Remington 700. This is the uh, Oh no, this is the 90s Remington 700. Uh, my first 270, it was a lightweight 270 Remington 700. It had this weird, this was like what they did made uh, mountain guns in like the late 90s. It was a uh, weird plasticky feeling hollow stock, very light pencil barrel 270 model 700. The pro it was a decent light mountain rifle. The problem with it is it had that problem with the trigger that a lot of those Remington 700s had. Every time, or not every time, but uh, many times when I just racked the bolt, it would fire. So that was my only negligent discharge. It happened like three times and I would just sit there and curse out in the woods because I would scare every animal away within a square mile because I was just racking my rifle and the thing would go off. Very dangerous gun. <laughs> Glad I don't have it anymore, but kind of an interesting gun. Um, 
Then I got the Marlin 1895 Skinner Trapper stainless steel lever gun in 4570. Super cool gun. I did take a black bear with it before I put the scout mount on it, just with the Skinner peep sights. Uh, just amazing. You can't get better than a 457 Marlin gun unless you have a Henry. They're, they're about equal, I say, but uh, very cool lever gun. Uh, then we go back to the Remington 700 and the exact same model. I, I rebought the same model, so this is the only time I got the exact same gun, the whatever AAC SD Tactical. Um, I did not put it in an Aces chassis this time. I left it in the Hogue over molded stock. It's kind of interesting. It's free float unless you put a bipod on it, then the barrel touches, which is kind of lame. But even with that barrel touching that rubber stock, uh, it's still extremely accurate, I feel. Um, and it, it, but it's still a little too heavy for my, my hunting style. I got a muzzle brake on it. I did, I made it a replica kind of Chris Kyle rifle and, you know, rattle candy and flat tan and it put the cheek piece on it. It does have a uh, Leopold Mark IV fixed tactical 10X uh, tactical fixed stock, which it makes it like a period specific sniper rifle because they don't make those scopes anymore. They're pretty hard to find and people like to collect them to make these period sniper rifle builds. So this is my camp gun if I'm going on a you know, a boating black bear trip and I'm just going to be, you know, shooting at bears from camp or somewhere really close. Uh, not something I'd want to pack around. It is very heavy, but definitely a very cool 308 Winchester rifle. And that's one I, I still have. We, we're kind of getting into the last year or so. Uh, unfortunately, this one I got rid of recently. It was a pretty cool Fulton Armory Fulton Armory M1 Grand Tanker chambered in 308, not 30-06. So a pretty rare gun. It so a pretty rare rifle. Uh, just amazing. Really short. Really handy. I just couldn't uh, get a hold of the peep sights right. That is that trick where you have to click it two times forward and then click it once back to sight it in. I just had trouble with the old World War II peep sights. I was not accurate enough because I could not figure out those sights. So unfortunately, I did get rid of that one. Kind of sad about it because just uh, from a collecting aspect, it was a very cool gun. Finally, we get to uh, kind of the main hunting rifle I use now. I got this at EDC Alaska maybe two, three years ago. It's the Kimber Mountain Ascent in 270 and without the scope unloaded it weighs almost five pounds uh, just amazing definitely the lightest rifle i've had it makes such a difference hiking out in the mountains i am kind of worried when i use it because the barrel is just such a thin pencil barrel you think you're going to bend it just picking it up but pretty cool rifle and i have harvested several caribou with it so uh, it's accurate it's i've got the tally rings on it with that burst scope and it has stayed zeroed for uh, the seven, three hunting seasons now I'll just shoot it a couple times and make sure it's still zeroed go out hunting with it and take my animal amazing rifle but I will say my new plan for this upcoming season in 2023 is to get a Christensen Arms Ridge Runner in 308 I like the idea of the carbon wrapped barrels they're a little thicker still extremely light not quite as light as the Kimber but still you know a six pound uh, mountain rifle and I am going to get a lighter Leopold uh, scope for it and I'm my whole plan is to hunt with that true velocity, super lightweight polymer cased ammo and see what I can do this next year. So that's my plan. Let me know what you think of my choices, which guns I should have kept. Obviously, the, the Model 70 featherweight 30 out 6 pre-1964. I don't even like to think about that. Should have never gotten rid of it. So very sad story there. But thanks for tuning in, guys. Please become a patron if you can. I have links below. And it's Shoot, your friend in the field. My name is Shoot. I like to trade my guns just for fun. But now I have none. Oh, no, I get chucked by a bear. But I don't care. I got a 10 millimeter. Shoot out adventures. Why don't you call us that every time?